Welcome to Y Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada. And that is not haunted with a snoring ghost. That's just the sound one of the water coolers makes. This is lesson four in our Canadian Amateur Radio training series, where we're covering frequency, power, and bandwidth. This section has moderate difficulty, so go for 90 to 95% on the quiz. You should be able to achieve this after going through it three times. Frequency. This is the number of cycles per second. So the number of waves you get in the radio wave every second. So frequency is most often measured in cycles per second, but nobody says that. They call it Hertz with abbreviation HZ, capital H, lowercase z. So 60 cycles per second, which is the current in your Canadian household, is 60 hertz. A thousand hertz will often be referred to as one kilohertz or simply one K. And of course, a million hertz is a megahertz, which you've heard about, say, in your FM radio signals, you know, your favorite radio station, maybe at 99.9 .9 megahertz. That's what that's all about. So looking at it visually, you can see if we have a time of one second, which is the period in which we measure our frequency, uh, we've got four cycles per second on the left, 14 cycles per second on the right. Now, audio is not radio waves. It's uh, waves going through the air. It's relatively low frequency compared to radio signals. So the full range of human hearing is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Uh, and uh, maybe a kid can hear that as you age, you hear less and less. Radio or RF frequency is hundreds of thousands of hertz usually. It can go a lot lower, but for the purposes of our ham radio training, uh, this is the range we refer to. So AM radio, for example, is kilohertz, 640 kilohertz, or that would be 0 0.640 megahertz. FM radio, again, is in megahertz. Now, all those ways we talked about, when we're doing calculations, this is important for the test, stick with meters and mega. Okay, so before you do any calculation, convert it to meters, convert it from kilohertz to megahertz. That will save you a lot of trouble and save you a few errors. Now, the speed of light, I get confused. Is it 300,000 or 300 million? Well, just remember, one of them is going to be in meters and one of them is in kilometers. So we use meters, and so always 300 million meters per second or 300 yeah 300 million meters per second okay. now frequency frequency is the tone if you think of it in audio so like a musical note each note has a frequency and if you double the frequency it's the same note think about when you're moving up and down a piano you get low C, and then the next C, and then the next C. Each one of those is a doubling of frequency, and it, these are harmonics of the same frequency, or multiples of the same frequency. Now remember this, higher frequency takes more power. If you've ever played the trumpet, your fingering on the keys is exactly the same for the lower C and the higher C but you're blasting it, putting a lot more pressure in, and that doubles the frequency and gets you the higher note. So amplitude is the power within the frequency. So how loud it is. So again, frequency is the tone, which musical note. Amplitude is how loud it is, the power level. And a harmonic is a multiple. Some basic frequency math you're going to need. Now, this is important uh, for the test, and while it may seem a little complicated, it's a lot easier method than what is in the other training materials or the other courses you might take. 
We avoid a lot of the complexity with some very, very simple rules. We also avoid a lot of memorization. This works in the test with maybe one exception. So when we've tried this across all the questions, it works in every one but one. And remember, you've got a one in 10 chance of not having that question. So here's our trick. The speed of light divided by the frequency is the wavelength. So our speed of light is 300,000, or sorry, 300 million. I told you I get confused. 300 million meters per second divided by 50 megahertz means we've got a wavelength of six meters. And if you remember from some of our earlier introductions, when we talk about a frequency band, we may talk about it in megahertz, or we may call it, say, the six meter band. Now, the reverse, the speed of light divided by the wavelength gives us the frequency. So 300 million meters per second divided by six meters gives us 50 megahertz. Pretty easy, right? And again, if we, we stick with megahertz when we do these calculations. Now, here's a quirk, and I won't bore you with the reasons why. Maybe we'll put in uh, another lesson. But if you're dealing with frequencies below 300 megahertz, below 30 megahertz, use 286 million meters per second, not 300 million meters per second as your calculation base. Okay, so here's the rule of thumb for the test. You're trying to match your calculation with the results in the answers. Try 300 million first. If you don't get a good match, then try again with 286 million. If that doesn't match, go to the frequency just above the one you calculated. Let's show you how this works. So here's an example. The 15 meter band is 21 megahertz to 21.450 ohm megahertz. Now, if we divided 300 million by 15, that would give us 20. So it's not a good match. So let's see how our calculation works. But first, a couple of things about it. Below 30 megahertz, so basic with honors or advanced is required. Your straight basic uh, won't get you this. And again, also basic if you passed your Morse test. Your total bandwidth in this band is 450 kilohertz. That's the 21.450 megahertz minus 21 megahertz. So that's 0.450 megahertz or multiply by 1,450 kilohertz. Pretty straightforward. Okay? But that's bandwidth for everybody. So we've got our 15 meter band goes from 21 to 21.450. How much are you allowed to use in here? Well, you can use a maximum of 6 kilohertz within the band. That's all that's needed for your voice on your amateur radio. Now remember, the transmit frequency you pick will be at the center of your frequency band. So don't transmit at 21.450 because that's the middle of your transmission. So your 6 kilohertz will drop below and above by about 3 kilohertz. So you, the minimum frequency you'd want to use is 21.453 megahertz. Now, bandwidth requirements. We said, just said that 6 kilohertz is what we need uh, for voice below 30 megahertz in the HF bands. Different types of communication need less bandwidth. So CW, which is Morse in uh, ham radio speak, only requires 100 hertz to 500 hertz. It's very, very efficient. Moving up from there, there's a protocol called RTTY that you actually won't see people using much these days. It requires 600 hertz, so just a little more than the Morse. The Morse. SSB single sideband. Remember, we sh in one of the slides or one of the decks, we're showing you 
how SSB is part of the AM signal where we re remove unnecessary stuff. It only needs 2.7 kilohertz for voice. AM, as we said, below 30 megahertz requires 6 kilohertz. So SSB is a little less than half of the AM because we remove the lobe and the spike that we don't need. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, don't worry. You've either, you means you haven't finished one of the other lessons. And then FM, frequency narrow, frequency modulation, which is generally used above 30 megahertz in those bands that uh, someone with just the basic qualification is allowed to use. Uh, narrow band only requires 3 kilohertz. But you have to leave a 500 kilohertz deviation on each side. So generally you reserve about 15 kilohertz. So think of what that means if you're transmitting, uh, say, on a repeater, and that's busy, you want to have a conversation with somebody, uh, you need to move off by at least 15 kilohertz. Now, for the test, again, let's get back to our band plan calculation. So the test will say what frequency is or what band is it for this. So again, let's review. Use 300 million as the speed of light. If you get a match, you're good. If you don't get a match to one of the answers, use 286 million instead. You get a match, you're good. If it's still not a match, pick the answer with the next highest frequency from the one you calculated. Let's go through some quiz questions to show you how this works. So here's an actual question from the test. In Canada, the 75 80 meter amateur band corresponds in frequency to one of these four. So let's solve it. 300 million meters per second divided by 75 meters is 4 megahertz. Now, if you look in there, we've got, whoop, We've got two answers with 4 megahertz. Let's do the calculation for the second value. 300 million divided by 80 meters is 3.75 megahertz. So that answers, we've got a good match. It's right in the range of answer one. Let's do another one. In Canada, the 40 meter amateur band corresponds in frequency to which one? Well, let's solve it. 300 million divided by 40 meters is 7.5 megahertz. That doesn't match any of the answers. So let's go to our second step. Let's do the same calculation with 286 million. Divided by 40 meters on our calculator, we get 7.15 megahertz. That matches answer two. We're good to go. Here's another example, our sample question three. So in Canada, the 15 meter amateur band corresponds in frequency to which of these four bands? So rather than memorize, let's go to our calculations. So we start with 300 million meters per second, divide it by 15 meters, that gives us 20 megahertz. Is that in any of the four bands we've got here? Nope. So next we try 286 million meters per second, divided by 15 meters, we get 19.06 megahertz. Looking at the four answers, it doesn't fit in any of them either. So what do we do? We go to the next highest band. We take 19.06, which one is directly above it or closest but above? And that's answer four, 21 to 21.450 megahertz. So it's a simple method. It's way easier than memorization. And for these frequency band questions, it works for every one of them except one and causes a lot less head pain. Now, bands and bandwidth for the test. Remember, 30 megahertz is a big barrier. Okay? It's the barrier between people who only have the basic qualification versus those who have basic with honors, basic and Morse or their advanced qualification. It is the classic long distance 
bandwidth with HF frequencies to get that distance that amateur radios love. Okay. It's popular, so the bandwidth is usually limited to 6 kilohertz or less. Remember, 6 kilohertz will cover us for AM, and you'll need half of that if you're using SSB, and even less for our TTY at 600 hertz, and even less for Morse at 100 to 500 hertz. Now, there is one exception, 20 kilohertz for 28 to 29.7 megahertz. So the hint we use for this, and you'll see these hints in the quiz, Remember, the exception is 20 in the 20s, 20 kilohertz in that range. Okay. And radio controlled models are not allowed below 30 megahertz in those HF ranges. Okay. Now, there is one exception to the 6 kilohertz bandwidth rule, and that's a range of 1 kilohertz for 10.1 to 10.15 megahertz. Again, it's pretty esoteric. It's hard, it can be hard to remember, uh, but that's the one exception. Now, above 30 megahertz, where everybody's allow, allowed to operate, including those with just the basic qualification, radio control devices are allowed. So if you want to uh, use an, uh, an RC toy, a, a remote control chopper, a drone, something like that, as long as you're not interfering with anything else, yes, you are allowed to use uh, RC devices. And again, you need to check the band plan to see which frequencies above 30 megahertz you're allowed to use. Okay, so 30 kilohertz is generally the bandwidth you're allowed to use within the 30 megahertz band. So remember, 30 above 30. And that applies right up to 150 megahertz. Above 150 megahertz, you can use more bandwidth. So something we don't talk much about in, uh, in our abbreviated class is things like uh, fast scan TV. Amateur radio operators do uh, TV stuff. And if you think about TV, it's going to need a lot more bandwidth. And fast scan TV needs 5 megahertz of bandwidth. And way up above 150 megahertz, you are allowed to use that, as long as you're within one of the amateur frequencies that are allowed in the band plan. Now, power restrictions. Okay, so we're going at different frequencies. What do you use? How much power do you use? Remember that manners thing. You want to use the minimum you need to communicate. It's not just to save energy and avoid carbon emissions. Lowering the amount of power reduces the amount of interference, reduces the spread of your signal to other areas. There are maximums, and sorry, you just have to memorize these. I haven't found any trick around it. So you have transmitter input power. What's going in? For basic with honors, you have an overall max of 1,000 watts DC input to the final stage of the transmitter. That's a mouthful. Again, 1,000 watts DC input to the final stage of the transmitter. On FM, so above 30 megahertz in the VHF UHF range, it's a 250 watt limit. So again, below 30, that's for the long range stuff where you want to go around the world. Uh, above 30, when you're into FM, VHF, UHF, it's 250 watts input limit. Okay, so that means if, it's, if you have a basic license, your total limit's going to be 250 watts because you're not allowed to go on HF below 30 megahertz. Then transmitter output power. So we have input limit, and that input limit goes in. Your radio is going to lose power and heat and things like that, creating those wonderful radio signals. You've got a max of 560 watts PEP for SSB. PEP is an AC term because the, it's alternating current, it's a wave, and that's called peak envelope power. It's a max of 560. 
And of course, it's lower than the input power because your radio is going to generate some heat and stuff like that that goes out. And where do you verify the legal limit if you need to test? You check that at the output of the radio, which is your antenna connector. So at the antenna connector, basic with honors, you've got a limit of 560 watts PEP. Now take quiz four. Have a calculator handy if you find some of those calculations difficult that we mentioned. Uh, your test administrator will usually allow a calculator. Might not allow a smartphone to prevent you from cheating. So uh, if you show up, make sure you have a pretty basic calculator. Uh, as always, the links are in the comments section below. This section has moderate difficulty. Repeat the quiz until you get 90 to 95% accuracy. And this is achievable after three passes. So again, we're YLAB, the Makerspace and the David Dunlap Observatory. Now get to your quiz.